G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well first of all I'd like to apologise for not being able to put out a video yesterday. Uh, life just got in the way, had a whole stack of things going on. Number one, I went to the dentist. That was <laughs> a lot of fun as you can imagine. Uh, and then I just had family things and, and I worked a late shift uh, into the wee hours of the morning. So yeah, could not put a video out and I do apologise. Uh, I will make up for it today <laughs> with amazing and outstanding content as I do pretty much every day. All right, let's have a look. So at the market, 540 billion. So we are seeing a sell-off at the moment. Look, it's still nothing too major. Again, over seven days, we're not even down in double digits. Bitcoin has been higher and I suspect it still is going to go a little bit lower as well. But I'm not really too worried and we'll get onto some stories about that very soon. But first of all, Guay, so again, gas prices are up. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Again, maybe people still moving over to the beacon chain, ETH 2.0. BTC dominance uh, has fell like, you know, 0.1 of a percent. So from 62% down to, you know, 61.9%. So nothing really too much. And we can see a lot of red sort of here, but there, you know, Single digit sort of reds, nothing too major at the moment, but let's have a look. All right, what are the movers? Right, Verge, so not too bad from Verge, but again, it's still down 1.9% in seven days. Uh, Made Safe did all right, Zilliqa. So as we can see, there really isn't too many movers at all uh, in the top 100, and the ones that did move haven't moved all that much. Look out, Verge just jumped up a little bit there. Maybe it's about to pop, who knows? <laughs> I won't get too excited just yet. Uh, I do have some Verge, but uh, it's you know generally been in the red for me. That was one of my trades that didn't work out so well. But again, you know, long term, I think you know, in basically another year's time, I think it'll be in profit. Uh, most of my coins, if not all of my coins, I expect to be in profit uh, at least to the dollar value. It doesn't mean they'll be the best uh, investment because maybe Bitcoin outperformed them or something else. But I think dollar value wise, uh, everything should basically go up at least in the top 100, maybe even sort of the top 200. Outside of that, uh, no guarantees. All right, and losses. There were a couple of decent losses. Band protocol, so again, that's been coming down for quite some time. Uh, Decred, really hurting. Ample Forth, uh, coming down a lot as well. Compound, Aave, uh, and again, Aave had a pretty good pump, so of course, it's gonna come back down. Synthetics Network, I uh, thought I was getting in at a good point. Turns out it wasn't that good, but again, I'm holding long-term, so I'm not still worried. And for me, this is all buying opportunities. Look at Yearn Finance, that was 20, uh, 32,000 not that long ago, uh, and now it's on the way down. So again, Stellar, same thing, this was, uh, up around 16, 17, 19, 20 cents, I think something like that, coming down. So this is just a healthy correction, ladies and gentlemen, and a buying opportunity, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. As I said, I keep money on the sides uh, for things that happen like this, uh, and so I'm going to buy, although I'm not going to buy just yet. Well, actually, I'm, I might buy something this afternoon. We'll have to wait and see. Again, it's the weekend retracement I'm kind of looking for. So I'll just kind of hold out and have a look. I probably actually, I probably will buy a little bit uh, this afternoon. Because, uh, you know, you look at these prices, uh, you know, it basically says bargain basement sale. But I won't be putting all my money in because we still could pull back uh, quite uh, further. We'll have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So again, we're still way off the 50 day moving average and we're definitely a long way off the 100 and a very long way off the 200. So this is why I'm not gonna dump everything in at the moment. I do think we're gonna come back down and test this. Kind of the $17,100 level, I see that happening sometime over the weekend. Exactly when that will happen. Well, that's sort of hard to know. Uh, and again, it's not 100% guaranteed. It's just my personal opinion. I think we will come down and test at least around here. We might not come all the way down. Could be something more down around about here, you know, 17.6, 17.5. But again, we need to consider that the exuberance has been so high. People are taking profits at the moment. Imagine you bought Bitcoin here at $5,000 or $6,000. If you're selling at the moment, you've tripled your money. Now let's say you bought 100 Bitcoin at here. Why wouldn't you sell off, I don't know, let's say 10 or 15 of them, 
uh, to take some profit so you remain liquid and then again wait for the price to dip back down at some stage it will come back and touch the 50 the 100 and the 200 if it does what it's done in the past I'm not saying that's not what it's going to do now but 100% possible uh, it could but at some stage it definitely will so again you bought down at sort of you know just under six thousand dollars you bought a hundred BTC it's now worth basically triple that money so again you sell just ten percent get some cash so you know ten times seventeen thousand that sounds pretty good to me that sounds quite good to me now they've got some cash on the side to look for better buying opportunities uh, buy some more dips and things like that and that's all that's happening right now ladies and gentlemen but one of the reasons why I'm not super worried at the moment look we are still way above here uh, but I think stories like this is what makes me not too worried 169 year old mass mass mutual invests 100 million in Bitcoin so there's still more money piling into Bitcoin at the mic at the moment. Micro strategies, uh, you know, looking to buy more. This is just, again, a healthy, you know, sort of correction, and not even that bigger one yet. It could become a very healthy correction, which is not healthy for our uh, balances, but healthy in the terms of the market, and it could come back. You know, possible that Bitcoin goes down to thirteen nine. $14,000. I just I don't see it happening with stories like this happening at the moment. Now, over here I found some interesting stories. So real world use uh, cases for Nexo, Elrond and Blockstack lure in investors. I don't have any Nexo, I uh, don't have any Elrond. I do have some Blockstack and it's performed uh, reasonably well since I got it. So I'm pretty happy with that, but it was in the negatives for a while. And look, I'm going to keep an eye on prices uh, and I will probably look at Nexo, Elrond and Blockstack uh, and build some small positions in them. Nothing too crazy. A couple of hundred dollars, you know, maybe a thousand dollars, you know, if, you know, just really depending. Uh, I like all of these projects, but more so Blockstack. That's the one, uh, again, I invested in. Uh, and if it continues to go uh, down a little bit with the market, then I'll be getting into more because stories like this, you know, fill you with a bit of confidence that it has real world use. Uh, and people are sort of taking note uh, and getting into them. Uh, whether I get into Nexo and Elrond, we'll have to wait and see. Elrond does sound uh, very interesting to me, and look, Nexo is good as well. Uh, but again, we'll have to see. I, I don't have enough money to invest in everything, so I have to choose wisely. But all three of these projects uh, I do like. And again, I got into Blockstack quite some time ago. Uh, it, it didn't perform all that well for me at first. I think I must have bought into... Uh, you know, just about uh, the top of that kind of cycle. But let me have a look and we'll see. How is my block stack doing at the moment? Uh, block stack, so I'm quite happy. It's actually up about 66% for me. So uh, I'm stoked with that. But it wasn't always that way. It was sort of up and down and all around and things like that. So again, at the moment, I'll just be keeping an eye out for if it uh, continues to go down with the rest of the market. And when I feel that there's a, a bottoming out sort of, uh, you know, formation in the charts, well, that's when I'm really going to go heavy with the money that I have left over to try and get into things. And Blockstack will be one. Obviously, Bitcoin, I'm trying to get more Bitcoin. Uh, definitely buying uh, some more ETH, XRP, Stellar uh, considerations. I have, you know, my stacks kind of built in them. And unless they really come down significantly in price i'm not sure i'll be buying any more chain link that's something i'm definitely looking at and synthetics network again i'm keeping an eye on synthetics network uh, i'm still super bullish on it uh, and i think in the long term that will pay off but look there's lots of other good projects out there uh yeah i'm um, kyber network uh, i was doing so well in that for a while and it's really pulled back but look even if the price in kyber network doesn't go up so much uh, and my percentage has come down a little bit because I bought some uh, a little while ago. So I would be up a lot more if I hadn't have bought in at the higher price. But I get paid out uh, in Ethereum. Uh, and it doesn't make me a whole lot of Ethereum because I don't have that much. But I am making Ethereum. So, you know, I have my KNC staked and every fortnight uh, it pays me out my, uh, my Ethereum. But what I've noticed is the fees kind of almost outweigh. So for me, is, uh, you know, you have to vote. So I vote regularly for KNC, uh, but I don't take my 
uh, ether for quite some time because I need to let it build up so I'm not basically just losing it all in fees and the rest of it. So there, you know, there's some projects out there that I really like and if the price continues to come down, I'll be looking to, uh, again, you know, get some more. Algorand is uh, something else I really like. Uh, again, whether I'll buy more of that, I don't know. I've got a position in it. But there's a number of projects out there at the moment that I am keeping my eye on. Uh, and it's really just watching for those prices to kind of see where they're going to go and when I feel like I'm going to get in. Now, a story here that, you know, really doesn't surprise us, but Ethereum far outpaces Bitcoin in developer activity in 2020. Oh, look, I think it's been that way uh, definitely all of this year, but maybe even sort of, you know, early into last year. I'd actually have to look, but for sure, 2020, Ethereum has exploded not I think it's going to continue to uh, go that way I don't think there's any other project that's even close to being where ethereum is I'm not saying there's no other good ones because there is I really like Cardano I really like uh, polka dot I really like cosmos and I have some positions in all of those but nothing uh, like ethereum I've built myself a good position uh, in ethereum at least good in my terms uh, and I think ethereum will do really really well I haven't staked any uh onto the ethereum 2 beacon chain yet uh, i'm still waiting i, I want to buy one of those avados and again uh, i will do a video on the avados uh, so everyone can see what it is and to me it just looks like the easiest way to stake uh, eth 2.0 it's it's a device you buy uh, very similar to a router uh, plug it into computer and all the rest of it and it does all the work for you so it makes it nice and easy so that's what i'll be looking at but here we go the number of developers in crypto is ticking up again, according to the annual developer report from Venture, excuse me, Firm Electrical Capital. And one network remains a clear winner in terms of uh, attractiveness to uh, uh, coders. More than 300 new developers per month are joining Ethereum. Maria Shen, a partner at Electric and the report's author, told Coindesk Ethereum has continuously grown uh, through the crypto winter. So again, that was probably back in 2019 and all the rest of it. The report tracks ecosystems by blockchain. In other words, a Bitcoin developer is counted toward Bitcoin even if the person is working on its Lightning Network or any of its wallets. Similarly, similarly, similarly I can't even say that word, <laughs> Ethereum's numbers are driven by developers working on tokens that rely, that re rely oh, struggling, fundamentally on Vitalik's world computer. And look, that's the best way to think of uh, Ethereum. It's you know kind of like the new Google uh, of you know Web 3.0 is what they call it and things like that. Everything's being built on it, and it doesn't mean Google won't have a place, but Google will likely end up building on top of uh, Ethereum or something like that, or more likely, they'll try and build their own chain, but I, I think they're gonna be too far behind uh, and Ethereum will uh, simply uh, overtake them and they're more likely to uh, you know, adopt and build on top of Ethereum than probably to try and stay on their own chain. They'll just get left behind. I'm not saying they won't have their own chain, but it'll be, you know, I doubt they'll dump everything into their own chain. Uh, it'll just be easier to uh, get on top of Ethereum at the moment. Or again, just build their own chain uh, and build a bridge to Ethereum. That's probably uh, what they will do. But again, that basically means they're using the Ethereum blockchain. All right, last but not least, CFTC Chairman Tarbot announces resignation and he confirms that Ether is a commodity. So this is one of the things he's the most happy about. Over the course of his 18-month term, Tarbot has been a consistent advocate for principles-based uh, regulation on crypto. So he's he's been uh, quite supportive of it and he hasn't wanted to over-regulate it and stifle the regulation. And it is a little bit disappointing that he's going uh, in those terms at least. In a public statement on Thursday, Chairman Heath Tarbot announced that he will be leaving the Commodity Futures Trading Commission early next year. Enlisting accomplishments over the course of his term, Tarbot included that we have promoted responsible fintech innovation and declared Ether a commodity. This tracks with Tarbot's broader interest in the crypto markets and earlier statements affirming that Bitcoin and Ether should not face regulation as securities. And this is one of the best things that has happened to the space in a really, really long time. So we do have to thank him for that. Uh, you know, he has really brought crypto to the forefront uh, and pushed it towards that mainstream adoption. So, you know, 
on behalf of myself at least i would definitely like to thank mr tarbot and the work that he's done uh you know this has made the space uh, this has helped at least get the space to where it is now uh, and our you know, push to go mainstream and main adoption. Tarbot, who joined CFTC in 2019, has been a noted voice for sound crypto regulation at the federal level. He joins a laundry list of appointed regulators who are leaving their posts to make way for a new administration. Tarbot's colleagues, Commissioner Brian Quintes, is also poised to depart soon. So this is with Joe Biden. He's bringing in new people. So obviously, you know how it is. Out with the old, in with the new. And we can just hope that they are going to follow uh, in the great work that has been done previously to you know push crypto adoption forward so uh congratulations to him and well done all right look let's quickly go over to here one last time let's have a look at the smaller time frames so again look yes we are having a pullback and it's rolled over and it's definitely going lower and i can definitely see it sort of coming down to the seventeen thousand two hundred one hundred dollar level and look this is quite possible you know 16,500 we come down and bounce off the 50 day support it's not really much you know let's get the measuring tool out to go from where we are down to here it's only another seven point uh, another seven percent drop so don't get me wrong that's hurting from up here but now let's do this let's go from here and come down to here that would be a 30 percent drop from the top back down to sort of 14,000 and that would be a regular kind of you know retracement that we've seen in the past so these are things that I'm looking out for should bitcoin get down to 17,000 sort of 100 ish dollar level let's say 200 I'm buying some I'm not throwing all the uh, all the remaining cash I have on the side at it but I'm buying some if it comes down to sort of the 100 I won't buy at the 100 because it's pretty sort of close to here there's not a whole lot of difference uh, I'll probably wait to see if it goes a little bit lower because I think if we come down to this, we'll drop lower. And look, if I miss some, I miss some. I'm not going to worry. But I will definitely be looking at to put some money in between sort of, you know, this blue line, which is basically the 100 uh, moving average at the moment. You know, you can just round it off and say it's here. Uh, and again, round it off to 14-ish thousand. So if I see Bitcoin come down to, you know, 15,000-ish, uh, again, maybe 15.5, maybe just 15 flat. I'll really be putting some money into it uh, there. Again, not everything. I will still always try and leave a little bit on the side. And look, the last little bit of money that I have will really be for if by, you know, some chance it comes back down and tests here. This is where I'll be, you know, <laughs> selling everything I can, uh, you know, just, yeah, any spare cash I have, I will be putting into Bitcoin if it comes down and tests this level. I absolutely see Bitcoin coming down and testing the 200-day moving average uh, at least a couple of a couple of times through this bull run i just don't think it's going to do it yet that would be uh, one serious sort of retracement from where we are or sort of where we were to come down here yeah i'm not sure bitcoin's going to do uh, that kind of retracement at the moment i think the buying pressure would just be too much that would mean micro strategy and grayscale and you know all sorts of people would be selling and look it's not to say they wouldn't sell any to take some profit but I don't think they're going to be selling at this point. Uh, I think they would possibly be selling some uh, around about sort of here. Uh, again, they'd just be simply taking some profits and waiting to see if it went lower again, and then they would rebuy re in. That's if they decide to do that. All right, that's my point of view. That's where I've been. And again, apologies for not putting out a video, but I'm back today and I'll be back tomorrow and the day after unless something dramatic happens. And again, life gets in the way. Stay safe, be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But anyway, remain calm and I'll see you next time.